your vision of the future? Is it a sprawling metaverse a la Ready Player One? Is it an automated world that we all exist in like we witnessed in WALL-E? Or is it a mashup of futuristic scenarios you've gleaned and put together over the years but still somehow resemble a mix of Back to the Future and Daft Punk videos? Whenever we picture stories of the future, we picture the human race progressing ever further to the outreaches of space and technology and further away from our shared human roots. But what if technology could have the opposite effect? What if technology could lead us closer to who we already are and give voice to historical narratives that are previously unheard? Seven years ago, I moved to Washington, D.C. on a whim. Like any recent college graduate going through an identity crisis, I decided it was time to leave my small hometown, which is actually Cape May, New Jersey, and move to a larger city. While in DC, it was amazing to see people come from all over the world to one place to share their diverse backgrounds and interests with one another. At one point for several years, I lived in a shared group home with seven other 20-something-year-olds, and our home was a constant influx of people from all over. Despite my seeming love for where I found myself, I'll never forget a question that a friend, a DC transplant by way of LA, posed to me. He said, do you have any pictures hanging on the walls in your room? I thought that was a really random question, so I paused and thought about it, picturing the walls in my room overlooking U Street. And I said, you know, oddly enough, I don't. All of the pictures in my room are currently slanted, leaning against my dresser and desk. And he said, you know that means you're not committed to where you are, right? This was a big learning lesson for me, and I did go out and buy some hanging nails shortly thereafter that point. <laughs> but what it brought to my attention is that although I thought I felt connected to the place where I lived and worked every single day, perhaps that connection was less solidified than I had originally assumed. A recent Gallup survey stated that the United States is one of the most geographically mobile countries in the world. One out of four US adults, and that's 24%, usually will move at least once over five years within the United States. Data from the US Census Bureau shows that the average US American moves residencies more than 11 times within their lifetime. Another recent Gallup survey that came out last year showed that more American workers are working remotely and for far longer periods of time. Last year alone, 43% of employed Americans said they spent at least part of their time working remotely. And this was out of a study of 15,000 adults. Only up until the past 200 years, we all used to spend the majority of our lives in the same location most likely developing a deep connection there, whether one of necessity or of belonging. Passed down oral traditions, job skills learned specifically for that area, and music and or dance that emerged from the people of a place all contributed to con creating a collective thread that wove through time and space, remaining unbroken throughout the years. For them, they didn't have to gauge their level of commitment to a place based upon how many photos they had hanging on their walls. Instead, it was inherent. Now we find ourselves in an era where simultaneous narratives can be happening at the same time. So for example, Spotify playlists, based on our individual preferences, pulling in music from all over the world. I can be listening to Fleetwood Mac while my sister is listening to Beyonce next to me, both of us are in the same space, but we're actually simultaneously experiencing completely different and unique senses of place. This wasn't possible before. The same thing can occur in our daily activities. I can see a network of neighborhood streets as the place where I run every single morning, 
Well, you can look at those same streets and see a place where for generations, that was a parade path that your family would take at an annual celebration. So these are same locations, completely different meanings imbued into them, and multiply this by thousands of people within city limits. Also take into account that people are constantly shifting as residents arrive and depart. Mark Auger defined this as a non-place. And to him, what a non-place was, was a transparent, transient, temporary space where there was so much activity, you couldn't even regard to it as a place. Gertrude Stein, writer and poet, referred to these placeless places as there is no there there. So what do we do in this sort of digitally nomadic age? How are we able to define senses of places collectively and build spaces as well as cultural community centers where people can actually come together and feel involved? And how do immersive technologies, namely VR and AR, tie into all of this? So to further define what I, I keep saying sense of place and what I mean by that, I like to define by another word. Uh, and this word actually was found in the Oxford Dictionary 2016 Word of the Year shortlist, along with adulting and chatbots. And this word is Huga. It's a Dutch word. And already this year alone, more than 100 books have been published on the subject, and 2.5 million Instagram photos have been posted with this word as its hashtag. And so what the word means is it's a quality of comfort, conviviality, and coziness that engender a feeling of well-being and contentment. That's a very broad definition, and because of that reason, Hugo has kind of come to define everything from the warm glow of a candlelight to hands holding a mug in the winter. The reason why I think this is important are not these tiny details that have been marketed, but more so that there's a trend towards people seeking spaces where they can cultivate and foster authentic senses of human connection and belonging. Another way to understand what sense of place means comes from geographer Yi Fu Tuan, who said that places don't actually even come to existence until people define and give a name to a location thus separating it from the outward, undefined space. In other words, spaces, senses of place, are culturally and dynamically defined. Through time, shared stories and experiences connect people to place and places from generation to generation. And we don't really see that on a local scale anymore. We're seeing it more on a global scale. Most people, I'm sure most of you can attest, are more tapped into their news feeds than to the community bulletin. So how can we bring the two together, especially using technology? Are we able to stay tapped in and connected to our local environments while at the same time taking advantage of all the expansive information flow we receive from the amazing tools of globalization? I believe the answer is yes, and I think that we can do so with augmented reality and virtual reality. So I'm going to spend some time talking about each one. So augmented reality, the way that it works, is from the inside out. What that means is I can go into an environment and choose something like a building. I can extract information from that building and then overlay it with more digital information back onto that environment that I view with an AR-capable device. So I'm going to show you an example now that takes place in an AR app on a regular mobile phone. What you can see here is he's using the AR app to actually geotag and place a historical photo of the same building on top of itself. And this will remain in space. So now the next person who comes here with their AR-capable device and stands in the same location can see the same thing. In this way, he's an individual helping to build collective history. This next video shows how you can also add text to do the same thing. And these are just simple place marker tags, but picture if you could put your Yelp reviews or information you have from the past location. 
You can also add audio as well. Is a test of talking and seeing what happens when we record audio in space. This is a test of talking and what happens when we record audio in space. So another way to think about this is Wikipedia meets 3D spatialization meets geocaching. Because you can pull in the information from any source, now citizens can become collective historic contributors. So one person could add photos that they received from their grandparents, one person could put in local folklore, another person could be adding music they remember hearing in buildings throughout the years. Open source narratives have existed for a very long time, especially ones that pull in real-time information and that contain multiple points of view. We see this in our apps we use every day. When we use Yelp, that's multiple people putting their voice into the same system tagged to a location. Same holds true for the navigation uh, Waze, the app, if you ever used that. 90 million drivers are currently putting in information every day to constantly update that. The difference and what moves everything forward with VR and AR is that they work in the realm of 3D space, unlike 2D, which we originally had with our apps and even traditional film. With 3D, we now have an additional dimension of space, so we can actually add more room and bandwidth, which allows for more visualization of larger amounts of data, so the stories can become more detailed. Now, VR acts similarly, although sort of in the opposite. While AR comes from the inside out, with VR, we come from the outside in. So all of that information is coming into a closed, immersive, computer-generated environment that we can create entirely new spaces in because you can't see the outside world. And although everything that you see and hear and even potentially feel inside of a VR space is artificial, it's important to remember that we're still building senses of place within these digital environments. And this is because while we take it for granted, every day when we're creating memories, we're doing so in a spatial environment. So when we're in VR and we're walking around and we're looking and we're hearing in all 360 directions, our mind considers that to be real. Because of this, it's important to remember that digital representations of space can also become non-places. And I think we should remember as we're building these to make sure that that doesn't ha occur. The digital is going to increasingly become more tied to the physical. I wanted to give you some recent examples that just took place over the past two weeks. Uh, Facebook Spaces, which if you don't know what that is, it's Facebook's social VR application. Uh, just this week, they went to Puerto Rico, virtually. And there was a lot of press that came out about this, so I won't speak to too many details. But basically, there was a disconnect between the hosts and the virtual space that they found themselves in. Reason being because they weren't paying enough attention to the intimate information details throughout the space. They were treating it as if it was a background 2D flat video instead of an actual space. So they lost all of these layers of meaning that could have really created a collective sense of space, especially after such a tragedy. An opposite use case uh, just occurred two weeks ago, and it actually featured fellow TEDx speaker that I hope you guys witnessed this morning, Wyclef Jean, uh, when Slate Magazine interviewed him within Facebook Spaces to talk about his new album. Within there, the context was completely different. They virtually traveled to Haiti, where Wyclef was born and raised, and so over and over, he kept adding additional layers of context to the 3D environment, talking about his personal narratives or historical knowledge that he had accrued through the years. So something that could have been perceived as just a digital space that we can stand on and talk about normally as if we're hosts of a show, now was an actual space that others could add meaning to as well. When my friend told me that I was treating the place where I lived and worked every day as a non-place, I made it a point to seek for myself what actually ties me to this location. For me, I found the collective thread in the DC local music scene, where musicians would play shows in local venues and their intimate homes. And the musicians there cultivated spaces where they could speak to not only their everyday local DC experiences, but also build upon the legacy of DC music history that had come before. 
And because I had started working in VR and AR at the time, I wondered, is it possible to capture an entire collective shared sense of space and play it back for others? Can we record slight fleeting moments of Huga and then show others so that they can understand personally and collectively how we view locations? I found the need for this tool more than ever when I watched the DC city commissioners try to understand if they should begin developing public spaces, particularly these music spaces I spoke about. And I witnessed as artists and developers came head to head, trying to communicate their opposite points of view for this location. They each felt a different sense of space for the same place. With VR and AR, we're able to take opposite points of view, even if they're radically different, and geotag them to the same location. So they can now exist in the same coordinates. As other emerging technologies begin to take us to the ever burgeoning limits of outer space, it's important that we don't forget about the spaces that already exist. In this way, we can begin reclaiming and redefining our public spaces and together committedly hanging our pictures and visions for the future on the walls that are digital of the world. Thank you.